My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, or I should say this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. I am actually from Tampa, Florida. My name is Didi Bresky. I am a lifestyle and business design coach. I'm an NLP practitioner and certified hypnotherapist, and I combine those tools with biblical and spiritual principles to help people achieve a transformation. So that's me. Awesome. So got a few questions for you. One of my first questions would come into mind that right now, without being on the negative side, without looking at the negative side of it, mm -hmm. is that a lot of individuals are having a hard time because maybe a lot of their efforts is not giving fruit right now. It's not coming to the harvest time. And then there is the other group that is actually doing fantastic. They're doing being very productive. So we're going to discuss both. If somebody's not getting results today, what is your recommendation? Okay. I love that question, by the way. So here's the thing. I used to all, I've been to like tons of events and I'm sure you've been to events too. And they always tell that story about how somebody is going to leave this event and their life is never going to be the same. And somebody is going to leave this event and everything's going to stay the same. And I used to always take that as a personal challenge. Like I want to be the person who leaves and everything changes. So I'd go home and I'd work really, really hard. And it wouldn't really work out for me. Like it wouldn't pan out. And so I learned some things like in the years since then. Taking massive action. There are some things that you need to do um, is one, you need to align your expectation. So when I say align your expectation, like what is it that you're going after? And do you actually believe that that is going to become your reality. A lot of people are working really hard, but they don't even have that expectation or that belief that what they're working hard towards and what they're doing is going to pay off. They're doing it because somebody uh, said- I got a I little challenge. I'm having a little difficulty. Are you on your data or are you on your Wi-Fi? I'm on my data. Should I switch to my Wi-Fi? Let's switch to Wi-Fi because you were just going in and out. I missed some of that. So let's try Wi-Fi. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, give us a second, you guys. We're going to switch to Wi-Fi. We're going to see if that works. All right, let's continue on that. So you went to an event, you came back, but it didn't pan out the way that you expected to pan out. Right. So what I figured out from that was that it's not always about taking action because you can go to an event or you can buy a course and somebody can give you a five-step framework or a do this or a do that. You can start doing all the things and it not work out for you. And the reason is you have to make sure that your expectation is aligned with the outcome that you desire. A lot of people are just taking action, but they don't even expect that the action they're taking is gonna pay off. And it's not like a conscious thing, like, oh, I'm doing this and I don't think it's gonna work. It's more, I'm doing this because somebody told me to. And so you have to align your expectation. You have to align your energy. If you are, success has a frequency, right? It has a vibration. And so if at, while you're taking this action and while you're doing these things, you feel negative, you have to think about the fact that that level of success or that amount of money probably feels really good. And if you don't feel good, then you're not going to get it. Um, if you are vibrating at a frequency of $50,000 a year and you want to be making 100000 or a million, the frequency of a million dollars is never going to come down and be the frequency of $50,000. It's not how it works. So you have to change who you're being. You have to level up who you're being. You have to level up your expectation and level up your energy. And then from that place, take action instead of just like, I'm doing it. I'm doing what they told me to do. I'm taking massive action. And it's like, this is, that is why people get stuck and feel like they're spinning their wheels. And they're like, why am I'm doing everything they said? Why isn't it working? Even if you cannot consciously tell, there is a difference between taking action that is aligned and just taking massive action because somebody told you to do it. And the proof is in the pudding. If you're taking that aligned action, it will work out for you. And if you're not, then that is likely why you're spinning your wheels. And then what happens is you spin your wheels for so long and then you quit. And so then you have to start back at the top. And so you're like, okay, I'm really going to do it this time. And then you start doing it and you're like, oh, this is harder than I thought it'd be. And then it's been six months and you thought that you were going to be successful by now. And it sucks and you're like still having the same results. So you quit and then you keep going. And that's the self-sabotage spiral. It's like, um, you can look it up. It's actually called the success curve. And basically it starts out at uninformed optimism. It's like, this is going to be great. And then it's like uninformed or informed pessimism. Like this is harder than I thought. The valley of despair, 
this sucks and I'm never going to reach my goal. And most people never make it out of there. But if you keep going, when you think like, oh, this sucks and I'm never actually going to get out of here. This is really hard. If you keep going just on the other side, it's that informed optimism. It's, oh, I think I can actually do this. And then you actually realize your goal and succeed. So I don't know yeah. why. I, th I think I call it, I mean, what I have heard is, is called the valleys of life. And a lot of people, they get stuck at that, those valleys. And listen, I think in our society, we have this issue, or I'm having this issue with, with a lot of the surroundings where if individuals don't make it and they don't, they don't come up to other people's expectation, it's kind of like, it's brutal on their self-confidence. But to me, it's like, what did you learn from that? Because you do have other opportunities to, to, to build up on that failure, or I don't even call it a failure, it's temporary defeat. You right. went, you tried to do it, you couldn't do it this way. Well, that's a definition of a true inventor. Like, that's how they do constantly. They don't get it right the first time. As a matter of fact, Nine out of time they get it wrong, and then that one time they get it right, and and so to me it's like, how do we not take it personal, and how do you not let it affect you internally, when your surrounding, when you look at it, your surrounding is, they're dictating that you're in your valleys right. of your life. So this is really interesting, okay? Because it's a it's a simple like a mindset switch or a new frame to look at failure through, right? Some successful people think that failure is feedback, right? So failure, it's not failure, it's feedback. It's saying, okay, you have to be flexible. You can't just say, I want to do it. And when it doesn't work the way that you expected it to be like, oh, well, I failed. It's like, no, okay, what's the data? What did I learn from that? And then you take that and apply it to your next effort. And so you keep getting better. It's how a baby learns to walk. They keep trying. They keep adjusting. They're not just like, oh, well, I tried to walk and I fell. So I guess I'll never try again. And that is the problem. We need that infant mentality. That's like, I'm going to keep trying until I do this. I, ha I think infant mentality because I just had a baby. So I'm like, like I watched well, her. My daughter is going through that phase. And she, listen, this, this, this little girl walks on concrete and crawls on concrete butt naked to get to the pool. And I was telling my mother-in-law the other day, I was like, what type of skin does she have that she does not feel this? Like she sees the goal of the water and there is nothing that you're going to put in front of her. If she's got to cry, she's got to point, she's got to do this, she's got to have tea. Like she is going to get to the water. And literally there's like four or five other people are working the universe to get her to the water so they don't get her to the point that she's crying and then she's going to go historical. But the way she, like, I don't think she feels the concrete. I really don't think she so feels the scratches on her leg. She's just focused on the water. Right. And that is how we need to be as adults. We need to be so focused on what we desire that, like, as we're getting bumped and bruises, it's not like, don't let that defeat you. This is part of it. This is part of it. You stand and you fall and you don't let the fact that you fall defeat you. You're not like, oh, that really sucked. You're just like, oh, this is part of the process. When you're going towards something new, when you're trying something that you've never done before. And the difference is, I think, too, is when babies are falling, you know, we're like, oh, good job. And when you're falling in real life, people are looking at you like, why are you still doing that? So that's why you just have to know that if you keep doing, if you keep trying and applying new things that you've learned from your failures, if you keep doing that, then eventually you're going to realize your goal and have that understand that you reaching your goal is a certainty. It's not just, if you focus on it long enough, it's yours, but most people lose sight of that. And they're like, well, I don't know. You're taking action, but you're not certain that you're going to reach your goal. So like there, I have zero doubt that my daughter's going to learn to walk. Like, you know what I mean? It's just obvious. I had zero doubt that she was going to learn how to stand. It just took like her falling on her butt 400 times or 500 times or a thousand times. So. Yeah, no, mine didn't, mine was not going to crawl. She was walking on her butt and she refused to be on her belly for her life. Like she was not going to crawl. This, this little girl wanted to just stand up and just go. And when the time was, she just literally like lifts up. She doesn't hold on to it. But here is the thing. So how do we make it 
dummy proof? How do we make it like, how do we brainwash ourselves so we don't have any excuse for not succeeding? Can we maybe record ourselves at the peak level, record an audio, and whenever we fall, since we don't have anybody that says a mom and dad or cousin or mother-in-law or father-in-law that says, good job, get up, we could just like play that audio right. for ourselves because, I mean, I mean, that's how I can think. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Just maybe you can't say good job to yourself because you're kind of going through that emotional roller coaster where you're down, but you could play the video to yourself. You could play your own audio to yourself. Right. So I think that that's really, it's a good thing to bring up because you have, there's some battles you need to win before you start or when you get there and things are like cards, you're just going to quit. And so it's, it's take a little bit of time. And think about all of the times in your life when you've succeeded at something and all of the times you failed before you had that success. Like, what was your frame of mind? Why did you keep going? Like, in school, did you ever fail a test? You didn't just quit, right? Because you knew that that wasn't an actual answer. We, you know, or finish college or whatever, and all of a sudden quitting is like, it's an option. You know, there's nobody, you don't live with your parents. There's nobody there to be, you say like, oh, you have to keep going. It's just like, oh, I can quit and nothing really happens. But something does happen. You don't achieve your potential. And so you have to just reframe failure as feedback. Failure is feedback. Failure is feedback. And so say that to yourself until you start to believe it. Until it's like, oh, this is just a part of the process. You know, yeah. when you start doing anything... Go ahead. Do you think as as individuals, especially entrepreneurs, do you think we underestimate the price that we have to pay or the exchanges we have to do to, in order to get what we want to get? Because I feel like if initially they would tell you what the upfront cost is, you might like kind of, I mean, let's look at parenting, right? Mm -hmm. If they would have told me the diapers that I have to change, and how they, they smell, and how much babysitting I needed to do, and how much of a supervision you need to do so nothing happens to the baby, you know, I would have, you know, I would have, I would have uh, thought about having babies a little bit differently. You know, I would have been, you know, <laughs> let's let's look at the the pros and the cons. Let's just, right. just you know, outweigh this. Nobody tells you that, and they they kind of lie to you. Everybody says, "Oh, it's fantastic." It's the best thing that could happen. It makes you a man. It makes you a true father. Like, it's the best thing that could ever happen. But if they would have told you how much diapers cost and how much you had to pay on a monthly basis, I think a lot of people will have second doubts about it. So I'm telling all my friends, I'm like, I'm going to be a true friend. I'm telling you, whatever <laughs> you think is going to be, multiply that by 20, and then let me know if you're ready. Because I'm going to tell you the way it is. Multiply by 20, not 10. Multiply by 20. If you think yeah. it's going to cost you $500 a month, let's calculate $2,000. Are you cool with it? Right. Now, if you end up spending $500, you got off easy. But if it's $2,000, at least you had a true buddy that told you the true cost of it. So I'm trying to, but you know, but they still go get pregnant and they still do it. I don't know what it is. I tried to scare them, but I guess I'm not doing a good job. We're both trying to care the people we care about then because I am doing the same exact thing. I'm like, listen, this is, but I, I mean, I also waited seven years to have babies after I got married. Like I was in no rush. Life was good. I got to take naps. I had nobody to take care of other than myself. And I liked it that way. But I'm just like, this is more than a notion. Like you don't, it never stops. It's a full-time thing. And that's, here's the thing though, with these like full-time jobs that we sign up for when we have babies or when we start businesses. The thing is, it is hard, but it makes you grow. It is like, if you ever wanna force yourself to grow, start a business and commit to it. Like you have to commit to a baby, right? You can't be like, oh, this baby is getting a little hard to take care of and I'm sleepy, like I'm just gonna, no, you commit, you're here now. Like this is, you know, you're in it to win it. and. And look at your business like your baby. Commit to it. And know that when you commit to it, you're going to see the fruits of your labor. Yeah, and if you be treated like that, like, nobody's going to come. Like, I haven't heard any parents say, I'm going to disown my child. Like, if this is not working out, like, I'll talk to you later. Here, I'm going to give it to the neighbor. Or I'm going to go file for bankruptcy, get rid of you. So if I, I feel like, and I'm not saying you should not walk away from a business if it's not 
doing what he's supposed to be doing or you got to upgrade and change. That's not what I'm trying to say. But sometimes I feel like the commitment of you planting that flag, right. I think that flag is not deep in the, Like it's a little bit of maybe like three inches of concrete Right. And you got it there right now. So with a couple of wins, or with just like a little good yep. shove, it's it, the, the flag is coming down. But if you went ten feet deep, and you got ten feet of concrete, right? I don't know if you're gonna be able to move that that easily. I think right. it will take an act of God. Like you're gonna really get a big bulldozer. You gotta get one of these big, huge eighteen wheeler trucks. Like it's gonna take something out of this world to move that. If you have gone deep, ten feet, planted the concrete, now you got your flag. Ain't going nowhere. You're exactly. stuck with it. Yeah, and I a mantra that helped me a lot um, is proceed as if success is inevitable. So, and I will say that to my in in all kinds of different situations. Um, even so, I started. This has this is not business. This is fitness. But a principle is a principle, right? So if it applies in one area, it applies in another. So I was um, I started my fitness journey, and I knew what I wanted, and I knew what I wasn't willing to do, right? Because as a woman, I've tried all of the diets. I've like not eaten. I've killed myself on the treadmill. I've done it all, and I was like, I'm not willing to do that. I'm going to lose weight, and I'm going to do it walking. And so I started doing that. Well it had been like three weeks or something or a month and I got on the scale and nothing changed. And that's what I like to call the Valley of despair. It's like, Oh my gosh, I've been doing this. I've been, nothing's changed. But then two weeks later, I told myself, I took, I, I took a, um, Instagram of it. I was like, this, you, this would like kill me in the past. Like I would be like, all right, well, I need to drop my calories or I need to start running or, you know, I need to like start, doing something really crazy. I was like, no, I'm going to proceed as if success is inevitable. Two weeks later, I'd lost 10 pounds. And now I, um, and today I'm at my pre-baby weight. And I mean, it's been like five months, but when you know that you're in it to win it, when you're in it for the long haul, you can take that where's the fire approach. Like, what's the rush? I don't need it to happen today. I know that it's going to happen. And how many miles of walking was it? How many minutes? Did you go based on miles uh, or minutes? I walk, well, I started out walking for like 15 minutes and then I ended up having fun. Like my brain starts turning on whenever I'm on the treadmill. So then it turned into an hour. So I walk for like an hour a day and I love every second of it. Yeah. What's your, what's your optimal speed that you like? I walk at a 3.7. So it's a fast walk. Um, it's a fast walk, but it's just walking. I was not down to count a calorie because here's the thing for success in any area, you get to set the rules. You can succeed any way you like, you can have success any way you like it. Right. So I could have lost this weight and may I could have lost this weight faster. Maybe, um, I could have lost it counting calories. I could have lost it with keto. I could have lost it running. I wanted to lose weight walking because I was like, that's easy on my body. It's like something that I can commit to every day because it's not hard. I don't have to worry about like my knees hurting or my back hurting. It's a walk. And that's the thing. You set the rules for how you want it. Sometimes people are like, oh, it's so hard. It's like, well, it's only, it doesn't have to be. Change the rules. And so my rules this time where I'm not counting calories, I'm eating food whenever, like if I'm hungry, then I'm going to eat. And if I'm not, then I'm not going to, and I'm going to walk. And so just like in fitness, you can do that in business. You can too. Like if you hate doing sales calls, you don't have to do sales calls just because that's what somebody told you to do. Set the rules. How do you want it? And then do it that way. Because there's a version of you who gets success doing something you hate. And there's a version of you that gets success doing only what you love. And so I chose the path of doing only what I love to do. And it's working for me. So how do people find you? Um, you can go to my Instagram. It's Dee Dee Bresky. You can find me on Facebook. It's Dee Dee Bresky. You can go to my website. It's Dee <laughs> What's your favorite self-help book? Um, my favorite self-help book? Top two. You're off the picking. I'm just giving me top two. Oh, there's one that I want to say, but I can't recommend because you have to read around it. I like The New Psycho-Cybernetics and Atomic Habits. Yeah. Yeah, Atomic Habits is cool. Yeah, the topic habits. I, I I think I've I've read it a few times, and I have I have the summary uh, of it too, and I got the graphics. I saw a couple of small videos on it on YouTube, and that's how I got turned into it. 
uh, James cool. Yeah, they're, they're, they're cool. They're cool people. So here's my last question for you. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to start their process on self-development, where do you recommend them to start? So they're not too overwhelmed. Okay. So personal development for a purpose, right? So not just to just say that you're in the middle of it because you can just stay personal. Like that's a life journey, personally developing, growing and becoming the best version of yourself. Um, and most people want to have things, right? So that's kind of like the goal. Like you have to become the person who can do the things, who can have the stuff. So when I think of personal development, it's all about the becoming. And if I become a person um, worthy of certain success in life, then I'll get it. And so personal development is all about becoming. So you have to change who you're being, right? Be, do, have is the model for success. And so personal development is all about being, changing who you're being, leveling up who you're being. And that sounds woo woo, but I'll break it down and make it a little bit more practical. Who you are being is the way that you are thinking and feeling over time. So how are you thinking and how are you feeling? Are you feeling good and positive or are you feeling um, negative? If you're feeling negative, this is like the moment where you start to become self-aware. Decide that today that you're gonna become aware of when you're feeling negative in your body and change it. Because if you're feeling negative, you're not gonna attract good things. You're gonna attract negative things. So change who you're being, change the way that you're thinking and feeling over time. If you change the way that you're thinking and feeling, that will influence the action that you take and the things that you're doing, that will influence the results that you're getting. So be, do, have. Change who you're being. I love it. Listen, thank you, thank you so much for, for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us. Hopefully we'll be able to do more videos because some of the topics we talk, as you already know, uh, they're, they need to be way more discussed and, yeah. and get a lot of other feedback and other people's questions. But thank you so much for being here. Stay safe. Yes, you too. Thanks so much. This was fun. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.